Hi, this is Michael Megali and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 126 for the Manual of Chronic Total Occlusion Interventions. This is a case illustrating several approaches to treating balloon and crossable lesions, among other lessons. The patient was an elderly man who presented with non ST elevation myocardial infarction and hypotension. He had an ejection fraction of 20%, and geography showed the CTO of all three coronary vessels. He did get an intraortic balloon pump that was subsequently weaned off, and underwent MRI that showed viable myocardium in all territories, and was therefore referred for high-risk complex PCI after he was turned down for coronary bypass graft surgery. This is one image from the coronary arteries, a lot of overlapping, making it hard to interpret, but the patient does have an occluded LAD, which is immediately after the takeoff of a diagonal branch. So this is the LAD, there is a large diagonal branch, and then there is a CTO of the LAD with diffusely diseased distal vessel. In such patients who are at high risk, we always like to perform right heart catheterization on baseline. First of all, to assess their baseline hemodynamics and the need for hemodynamic support, but also to monitor the progress of the case and get an early warning if things are not going well. In this particular case, the PA was slightly over 40 and with a PA diastolic of uh, around 20. However, given the significant risk with three vessel CTO and low ejection fraction, we decided to use prophylactic support with an impeller device. Moreover, the wedge was 26. However, the patient did have a, a significant left iliac disease, and we were unable to actually advance the impeller past that left common iliac artery. As a result, we did um, place um, a sheath and with the help of the vascular surgeons we did place a covered stent and eye cast 8 by 38 millimeter stent and after that we were able to advance the impella sheath through the stent. The impella was successfully inserted into the left ventricle and then uh, support was initiating providing flows of uh, 3.5 liters per minute. And diagnostic and geography shows the same finding of significant disease in the proximal and middle AD with the CTO of the middle AD. To our surprise, we were able to advance a workhorse wire into the diagonal branch and then getting the care of a microcatheter right at the proximal cap, we were then able to easily advance a filter XT wire into the distal LAD. However, the problems came afterwards because we were unable to deliver either a small balloon, including a Sapphire Pro 1.0, as well as a Turnpike LP and a careful microcatheter, even though we did use a guide catheter extension. And this is commonly a problem when crossing is easy in heavily calcified lesions, then sometimes we have a lot of difficulty delivering equipment or expanding the lesion to do the severe calcification. Interestingly, if uh, dissection or re-entry techniques are used in those lesions, stent expansion and crossing are actually much easier. So how do we approach these balloon uncrossable lesions? The first step is to try a small balloon, which we did try in this particular case with the Subfire Pro 1.0, which is the lowest profile currently available in the US. And then we can also rupture the balloon in the vessel, which we did with a, a small balloon. This only happens with a 1.0 to 1.5 millimeter balloon, not anything larger than that. The next step is to increase support, and we did do that by using a guide catheter extension. And then, if this doesn't work, the next step is to try reverse microcatheters, which we did try in our case, both a turnpike LP as well as a curve microcatheter. And there is this wire cutting technique in which a second wire is advanced followed by alternating balloon inflation over those wires, but we were unable to get a second workhorse wire, and other C on blue would not cross into the lesion. The next steps would usually be to do laser, and then if that didn't work, find a way to advance an atherectomy wire and do atherectomy. However, this technique is very um, problematic in my mind, because if you pull back the wire and then you cannot get the wire back in, you just lost your wire position. However, we now have a, a new atherectomy wire, this, the, the Viper wire flex tip, 
which is a 19 wire that has much better torquing than the traditional atherectomy wires, both the Viper Wire Advance as well as the uh, Rota Floppy Guide Wire. And by using this guide wire uh, through the caravel, we were actually able to successfully wire through that area of occlusion into the distal LAD. After doing that, we were able to do multiple runs of uh, orbital atherectomy. And then after that, the Turnpike LP successfully crossed. However, we did have an increase in the PA pressure. And this is again one of the nice things about having the PA pressures constantly monitored. We did see early signs of a problem. We took an image and there was actually compromise in the flow to the diagonal, likely from the atherectomy. So we did uh, uh, rewire the, the side branch using a C on black. And then we switched for a workhorse wire and performed balloon angioplasty that did uh, help to stabilize the patient. The next challenge came when we tried to deliver a stent. Despite multiple high-pressure balloon inflations, we were unable to actually deliver um, various stents into the mid LAD. And that brings us to the algorithm for delivering stents and other equipment. The basic components of this is to either modify the support by using a different guide catheter, a different wire, or using more leisure modification by either balloon angioplasty, atherectomy, or now we have intravascular lithotripsy. We can also change the equipment, for example, use a shorter stand or a thinner strut, more deliverable stand. And there are other general ways, for example, having the patient take a deep breath that changes the configuration, or sometimes administering a rotaglide or viperglide through the guide. So in this particular case, we did multiple things. The first is uh, using a large guide, and we did have an eight French guide. We did uh, have femoral, so we have fairly supportive side, and we did use a guide catheter extension. In terms of wire, we did use a body wire that did not work, and eventually we actually switched to a wiggle wire that was useful. We also did multiple more balloon inflations. We had done already orbital atherectomy. And finally, we did use uh, different, various different types of stents. Eventually, we were able to deliver a 25 by 38 millimeter synergy drug eluting stent. You can see the guide extension is almost all the way to the mid. And then overlapped it more proximally with uh, a 275 by 38 millimeter synergy drug eluting stent. After both stents were placed, we did have a nice result. We placed an additional stent in the proximal LAD and we got a nice final result. The patient did have elevated PA pressures, that is why we left the impella in for another day, and it was removed the following day without any complications. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is the value of right heart catheterization, both for determining the need for hemodynamic support, but also for continuous monitoring. The second is how to deliver the impella if there is iliac disease. In this case, we did use a covered stent. However, another option would have been to use intravascular lithotripsy in the iliacs. That has been, done, has been done both for impella as well as for treating TAVR patients. Another lesson is the impact of side branch loss. In this case, we had the side branch occlusion of the diagonal that uh, did increase the PA pressures, and we had to go back in and restore undergrade flow. Then several lessons regarding balloon and crossable lesions. The basic steps remain the same, which is small balloon first, get extra support, use a microcatheter. If this doesn't work, an appealing option with a new advanced uh, flex tip uh, wire is to actually use that wire to wire the lesion and then do orbital atherectomy over it uh, as an upfront step instead of going straight to the laser, which has commonly been the next step in balloon and crossable lesions. And finally, when there are difficulties delivering stand, which is one of the most common problems in intervention, the various options are to change the support by changing the guide, changing the wire. Second is to modify the plaque with balloon angioplasty, atherectomy, or lithotripsy. And then change the stand with a shorter or thinner strut stand to achieve final success. Thank you.